Good morning and thank you for joining us today. Just a couple quick announcements. The funeral for Kathy Van Milligan is tomorrow at three in the afternoon. And the funeral for Ed Comerford is Tuesday at 3.30. We express, we express sympathy for both of their families. Please keep them in your prayers. I believe our presider today is our parochial vicar, Father Bill, assisted by Deacon Peter Harris. Please rise. we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace and love of God our Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. As we draw near to the Lord to hear him, to receive him, to be strengthened by him, he asks us to be open to the fullness of his love. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Great glory. 
Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our minds and love everyone in truth and in heart. O Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. From the book of Deuteronomy, Moses spoke to all the people saying, a prophet like me will the Lord, your God, raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord, your God, at Horeb on the day of the assembly. When you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord, our God, nor see this great fire anymore, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak or speaks in the name of other gods, He shall die. The word of the Lord. If today you hear the voice of not your heart, harden not your heart, harden not your heart today. If today, if today you hear the voice of God, the voice of
first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife and is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think when we come to celebrate the liturgy, we come hopefully with our hearts to be amazed by God who is ever present, who is ever faithful, whoever gives us what we need, all that we need. And I think the part of what we hear about in the gospel today is this sense of the deep awakening of people's hearts. You see, because in the time of Jesus, the people had been struggling and waiting for whatever this Messiah would be for them, this promised one who would come to heal the land and the people to heal the nation. But sometimes when that happens, not everyone is open to it. Not everyone desires it. Not everyone wants to receive it because 
sometimes people are caught up into there's a hope, yet there's this sense of what would it be like to be without this, without this way that I'm living, and I don't know anything else. I don't know anything else. On Thursday, I gave a talk on Catholic social teaching. And there's a memory that I have that is still very strong in my mind, in my heart, and in my life. The power of God working to give life to people. To give life to people. A woman came to me back in the 2000s when I was at St. John Newman. I had this strange way of attracting people. I don't know what it was. Really, seriously. I mean, people would come and say, someone told me to come and see you because you can help me with this. And I'm like, wow, okay. And when I left, I said, whoever that someone is, I wish you would have told me that you were going to send all these people my way because I didn't ever expect it. I guess I just waited. So one day this woman comes in. She had witnessed the death of her husband and her son as a man broke into their home and shot them. Her heart was broken and distraught because she didn't think about the loss of her husband and her son, more so that she knew that God would take care of them. She was more concerned about this other person and their state of life because her church had told them, told her, that he was destined to hell. There was nothing she could do for him. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And her heart was so broken. Her heart was so broken. She just didn't know what to do. She, she wept. She wailed for this man. This man, she worried about his salvation. God's love for him. Who of us could do that? Who of us could really do that after what happened to us? But her faith... Her desire to have faith was very strong. Faith in a reality that God could tell her something that would help her find solace. To find solace. And I told her to pray for the man. Her prayers would be salvation for him. Pray for him in an abandonment to God. God's will for him. God's desire for him, God's promise for him. And when she left there, she left there with peace in her heart. I also prayed over her. I prayed that God would help her in any way that she was unaware of, her pain and her loss of her husband and child. And she said she never felt such peace when she walked away. It was strange, kind of frightening, in a sense that she said, to look into my eyes, she could see the eyes of Jesus speaking to her, to her heart, to her spirit, to her life. And I think that's what we get ourselves trying to find today as we hear this gospel. Jesus comes into the midst of the people and he speaks to us of love, total love, total mercy, total grace. No one is without. Jesus wants everyone to feel that power, to feel that power of his love that he's come to bring. Salvation for us, his people, that he's always assured, already assured to us. Even in this pandemic, salvation for us, his people as he is assured to us. 
Atrocity is a hard thing to bear. It's a hard thing to, to try to find the courage to help another person with because fear in our own hearts can sometimes keep us from being able to know what to say and how to say that. But prayer and courage and trust in the Lord can help us in all things, can help us in all things. The power, the mercy of God can help us in all things. And that's what Jesus has come to bring and continues to bring as he brings salvation to his people, a salvation that is never without end. Amen. My brothers and sisters, when we profess our faith, we profess the great love God has for us. And so we turn to the Lord this day and we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I can ask for forgiveness for the sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Today we turn to Jesus, who is ever present, and ask him to hear us as we call upon his name. Our prayer is. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, may he find support from our communities of faith as he strives to lead us all to a closer relationship with God and with one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our archdiocese, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide the work of its parishes that through prayer and action, we may celebrate Christ's message of love and make it realized by all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to church ministries, may people listen to the inner voice of the Spirit and consider a gift of their lives in church ministries, especially for the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, Soften the hearts of those who are bent on hatred and violence and watch over those who dedicate their lives to protecting others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For peace in our country. May sad divisions cease so that our political leaders may have the heart and courage to serve people in justice and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are burdened with illness, addictions, or anxiety, may our kindness fill them with hope in God's goodness 
and may they be healed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Joshua Brown, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Joan Carlson, Estella Seguero Lazosi, Marie Day, Ed Comerford, and Stella Phillips, may they enter fully into eternal life in God's presence, and may their loved ones be comforted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. And for your own intentions held in the silence of your hearts. Lord Jesus, you who are ever faithful, you who are ever just, you who are ever loving, who call all of us to life, that the face of the earth may know you, that every heart may desire to be one with you in the Father and the Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord bless Lord, we bring to this altar the offering of our service. Be pleased to receive the gifts we pray. Transform our lives into the sacrament of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deeds by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death. 
and summoned us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with the angels, the archangels, the thrones, and the dominions, with the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing a hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ the time he was betrayed he entered willingly into his passion he took bread, gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice once more and gave thanks gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which would be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have called us to be present here in ministry to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Holy Father, Gregory John, the Archbishop, Joe, and Bernard, his brother bishops, and all your clergy. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, and with all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs with them in eternal life. And may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
ones who know how to pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, make us always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, you have said to your apostles, as you do to us this day, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but on the face of your church, and grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who has come to take away sin from this world. Blessed are we who are called to receive the Lamb of God. If you're joining us for this Mass online, please pray this prayer at this time. My Jesus, on the day of my baptism, you poured your love into my heart through the Holy Spirit, who unites me eternally to you. Through that same Spirit, I pledge my love and adore you, present in your most holy body and blood. Though I cannot consume you in this sacred banquet, let me be consumed by your complete desire for me, so that my longing for you may be filled by your love alone, and your mercy overflow through me into this world so in need. Amen. In the quiet, of my soul in the stillness I hear your voice call and I am overwhelmed I am lost for words to describe you, Jesus. 
Jesus, you're more than a friend. Jesus, you're more than my heart could ever express. Your love and your grace never fail me. Your merciful touch always heals me. You bring joy to my soul. Joy to my soul. Jesus, you're more than a friend. Jesus, you're more than my heart could ever express
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help of eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Because the Feast of St. Blaise is coming up, um, and we're not allowed to bless throats, we've been asked to just offer the blessing of St. Blaise uh, to everyone that the power of his intercession may help to give life. Please bow your heads and receive the blessing of your lives. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may God bless you, keep you from all disease, especially those of the throat. Amen. I know a woman who would always come to me after I gave that blessing the next day and said she got a cold. <laughs> Go figure. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remind my